That was certainly something that I just witnessed. It was insane. But before I get into it, I have to do a little couple of business things like, hey, if you didn't watch part one, links in the description or in the video header thing. I don't, I forget what it's called, but something like that. And yeah, anyways, let's get into reviewing this show and talking about my predictions that I made last part. Can I just say how mad it made me when the first second of footage instantly made me wrong in my predictions? Also, we will go over the rest of my predictions after I get into reviewing the show. But for now, let's get into the first couple of episodes. The first portion of the show feels like a total drag, not because it's bad or anything like that, but because it gets really repetitive to me. Like most of these episodes follow the general structure of a character gets a backstory or something happens to them that like changes it up a little bit, but then eventually an angel shows up and they, and they just like kind of like drop it or get through it. And that's really it. They beat the angel and that, that that's it. That's it. You know, and the credits roll. Boom. That's the episode. But sometimes there are things that break up the monotony in these first couple of episodes is uh, we meet like a new character or something like that. And this changes like the dynamic a little bit, but it eventually goes back into the repetitiveness all again. Also, sometimes they do give like some like details or some kind of lore about the world, but it's very, it's, it's few and far between, I feel, in these first couple of episodes. It's more about just getting to know the characters and that's cool, but I don't know. I feel like it could have been sped up just a little bit. Anyways, the only two episodes I really can say I remembered and I know well and I love them and I'll say, you know what, those episodes were good and I don't care, was uh, episode four, I think, I believe, where Shinji got discharged from having like a terrible outlook on life and piloting the uh, Eva and was supposed to leave the city for good. And he just stood there and didn't board the train and Mizuto, who was coming to see Shinji, uh, saw he didn't board and just stared at each other for a good minute and they accepted each other. The other episode I liked was episode 11 where um, they pretty much all teamed up to fight this like big spider dude. And I like this episode because it's one of the few times all three of the uh, main EVA pilots work together on a problem. Most other times it's just them arguing and getting in each other's way. And personally, I'm a big fan of teamwork and I just, I just love teamwork. I, if you have teamwork in anime, I, I'll probably like it even more. So I'm just, I just love teamwork. Again, though, it's not bad. And, and for most shows, I probably would have enjoyed this a lot more. But during this point, I was really confused how this was supposed to be a classic or something great. It just felt like another Gundam mecha show, but with a monster of the week gimmick to me at this point. Now, before I go any farther, I must go with the characters fast and quick, so let's begin the character speed round. Um, Shinji, he's the main character who pilots the EVA or even Galleon 1, either or, you want to call it. He has a problem always running away from his problems and being really scared easily. Rhea, she's the pilot for EVA 00, double zero baby. <laughs> She's a Dandere, which is an archetype I hate because of Mashiro from a pet girl of Sakurusa. Oh, I, I'm not Japanese. I don't, I don't speak Japanese, so there you go. But this show did the Dandere type good, and I actually kind of changed my opinion on it. Because, you know, when she actually did something, it put me on the edge of my seat. Especially when she slapped the taste out of someone's mouth. That, those are the cool moments, man. I got hyped. I got hyped when she started slapping people out there. <laughs> I just started slapping them out of their shoes. That was just good. Asuka, the third pilot, she controls Eva 01. She's a Sundere, but she has like wild ego problems that come from her mother caring about dolls more than her and legit hanging herself. It was it was bizarre. Like her past, man. I, whew, it was wild, man. Let me just say that. It, it was it was wild. Mizuto is the guardian of Asuka and Shinji. Not like parental guardian but more like i have to take care of these kids because no one else will so i guess it's parental guardian but she's not really the parents so yeah um she also likes to use men to feel wanted she also has a 
high ranking uh, official for NERV. And NERV is pretty much uh, the brigade everyone is in. It's a company where they pretty much pilot EVAs and do all that. That's that's what it is. NERV is the company that runs the EVA operations. Uh, we have Kaji. Uh, he is the man Mizuto uses and loves Mizuto. He also, not in like the first couple of episodes, but he does it later. He snoops around the nerve building and trying to find secrets and info, which is very cool to see because there's a lot of secret info there hiding. Let me say that. Toji, a friend of Shinji's school, who hates him initially because in the first fight, uh, Shinji got his sister hurt. But after realizing and apologizing and a couple of those down, they become good friends and, you know, they, you know, everything comes good between them. Ritsuko, a scientist whose mother worked on the NERV project and she is just continuing her work. That's basically it. She's really smart. She's like built computers and everything, but that's basically the, the gist of her. Um, and lastly, we have Jindo. He is Shinji's father, but it is really cold to Shinji and they don't have a good relationship with each other. Jindo is also the head of NERV and also has to conduct a meeting with other officials that he has to pretty much report to. Throw the wine wise, all you need to really know at this point is dudes are killing angels that are trying to attack Tokyo 3 and the city of Japan. Now at this point, like I said, nothing is really grabbing my attention and really getting me invested into the show. And I don't know what's really great about the show at this point. I'm really confused. Then the producers, writers, or whoever did a couple lines and went, Whoo boy! and started getting interesting because it got wild after this point. Like, Kanji starts discovering the deep secret to the nerve organization and shares it with Mizuto that these were like freaking hiding the first angel named Adam Underground, which was an insane discovery. It's also mentioned later that the whole point of why they're fighting is so that angels don't touch Adam. If they do it, it would mean the end of humanity. Um, soon after, in a fight with a new angel, Shinji gets trapped in a black void thing and created by the angel. The whole experience is like super traumatic and it goes through all this emotional stuff and, and all that. It's, it's, it's insane. It's like it messes with your mind. It's just like, what the heck? Apparently, the new nerve base in the United States blew up because of a, an accident. Because one of these EVA messed up and they're able to get the EVA, other EVA out, I mean. And then these dumb dudes say, yeah, let's let's get this thing up and running that just blew up and just vaporized the whole city in the United States. And they choose like Shinji's friend Toji for that job, right? And lo and behold, the thing malfunctions again. Ho, 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 what a surprise. Like, how stupid are you? And Rhea and Asuka next aren't in working conditions anymore during this fight at a certain point. So it's all less of Shinji, but he can't because he knows that someone's in the mech, but he doesn't know who it is. So it's like, oh, you know, a big, a big freaking, you know, moral dilemma for him. But he just, he just doesn't want to kill somebody, which I, you know, I commend. Jindo is a cold stone killer. Commands his officer to use a dummy plug, which pretty much was this thing that uh, lets AIs fight instead, but it has no morals and just, just goes all out just goes all out and it is like beats the heck out of uh toji's mech and when freaking shinji learns that it's his friend toji's mech he he goes berserk man he he legit loses it and i can understand that you know because they became friends and they were good friends at this point point. and even more so he, he shinji was like yo i'm gonna come down and i'm going to destroy the whole the whole freaking like plant and all that and and jindo's like no you're not and he pretty much just shut him down and saved his whole thing it was it was kind of wild honestly it was like it was like it, was, it really was like a cool moment to me it was just amazing then we also see like shinji gets in sync with his eva after like eating this other angel it was it was weird it was like a wild moment again it's just it, he gets more powerful from eating the angel and he has to get like reborn through this whole process and all that because he gets like vaporized or liquidized it's it was it was weird it was just weird i don't know what to really say about it now during this time kanji gets caught for snooping and apparently is killed but tells mizuto to continue his work which he does we later find out about all these dark secrets like there's like clones of Rhea which are like later destroyed by uh, Ritsuku and it's you know again it's just it's crazy 
Asuka goes through like an arc, which is like a downfall of her prideful self, because she keeps losing, and it culminates with during this angel fight where it messes with her brain to the point of no return. It culminates into like legit one of the funniest scenes I ever see. Like, like, please check it out. <laughs> It just, it comes out of nowhere and I freaking died laughing. I understand it's one of these series, but I died laughing. It was just too good. Now, because of Asuka's downfall from that hilarious moment, I'm sorry. Um, they get a new pilot who's off the charts, who is named Nagase. Also, him and Shinji even connects amazingly well. Shinji had like a lot of like trouble talking to people and connecting. So this was honestly a very amazing turn of events. So they became friends. Shouldn't you know? Shouldn't you think say hey, maybe things are going well? But you know the saying though: if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Nagasi turns his back on Shinji and is declared as the final and 16th angel that's needed to be killed. This is this whole thing? They, I guess they need to kill like 16 angels to you know set off the whole. I forget what it's called. Like the the ah oh, whatever the, the saying or the prophecy. There you go. The prophecy. There you go. Um, they fight for a while inside the nerve headquarters, but when it's all said and done, Shinji has to kill Nagise because it's either humanity going down or Nagise. And well, that's a pretty easy choice. Now, there is some things left out that are like some plot points that would help you understand it, but I didn't want to take too long. I feel like what I just said was long enough already. I tried to condense it and dumb it down as much as I could as possible because if not I would have been here for like six hours and I feel like it's so insane that I feel like I could talk about us for six hours because there's it's insane like there's so much things going on now these episodes are great because I feel like stuff actually freaking happens you get more insight into what drives these characters to do what they are doing and even more importantly than that you get to see their weaknesses or fears which is something you don't see that often in anime which was a welcome change of pace. Also, another thing I liked was how it felt like the characters' backs were against the walls and were so easy to just tip over the edge into the lunacy. Which happened to Sinji when, after he learned um, Toji pretty much had to go to the hospital. It was just insane for him. He went to this stage of just anger. And what I mentioned before, where Asuka pretty much just kept losing and the angel got up all in her head and just messed her all up. It was just all around great stuff, but to top it off, we need a great ending. But let's see how that goes. So apparently the story goes that the original TV show ran out of budget for episodes 25 and 26, which is why there's like a lot of black screens and they couldn't do all they wanted. So they later made a movie called The End of a Galleon, which would well be the end of the series. Now some agree and disagree apparently if 25 and 26 of the TV adaptation are the official ending, or is that End of Engalion the official ending, or maybe they're both the official ending? I personally think that 25 and 26 are the official ending combined, and I'll explain why. So, after Shinji killed the last person he opened his heart to, which is Nagisi, this dude has clearly lost it, even more so. He said when he did this messed up thing, I mean, it was just, it, was, it wasn't even messed up, it was just, it was just weird. He pretty much like, just, just, he yanked in front of an unconscious Asuka easily, easily one of the most bizarre things I've seen in anime, and and, and that's saying something. I've seen some stuff. So these these seedly people who have pretty much been the guys uh, talking about the prophecy about having to kill like 16 angels and everything, and the meetings that uh, Jindo conducts are these officials they talked about. They've been funding the Nerf Project for the entire show pretty much. They don't like Jindo's direction because he isn't following the plan exactly. So Silly tries to steal the Evas for her own use, which turns into this huge fight inside Eva headquarters. Plus, they have their own Evas, which come into play later. Everyone inside Nerve is fighting to save the Evas and the pilots' pilots' lives. For instance, they shoot Asuka, who is still supremely messed up from an earlier fight into the pond to stay safe inside of her Eva. Misato risks her life to permit save Shinji, who pretty much is like just just giving up. I mean he's he's dead inside. I mean absolutely dead inside at this point. Like it's ridiculous. And Misato pretty much does all she can to get Shinji to his mech. 
she does eventually die as well. Apparently, again, I'm pretty sure she's gonna die. Unless some magic here, I'll talk about later. Um, Asuka gets found out in a glorious last stand, which was really awesome to see. I was getting hyped because she was actually overcoming all these issues she was plagued with during like the final like five, six episodes. It was really cool to see. So I thought, wow, this is gonna turn around, be amazing. But, well, she runs out of power and this happens. And it was honestly crushing for me. It was so crushing. And even more importantly, it was crushing Shinji. Because when he finally gets on the field, he's in a total shock. And can't take it anymore when he sees what is happening. And again, he just he gives up. That's that's it, he just gives up. The Evas that Asuka were fighting trap Shinji, take him to the heavens, the cause of third impact. Um, third, it, it, it was like two impact. It, I, it's again, just confusing. Just, just take me for it, okay? And using Shinji and the Eva as a medium. Shinji calls out to Rhea, who we just found out was an angel. I, I know, big plot twist here. As well, and touches at him. Turns into this big, huge, white thing. I mean, it's freaking huge. In short, everyone becomes one entity, and it's Shinji's decision on how to make the world. Now, all that I've explained was from the movie End of Engalion, and this is where I think these TV episodes come from. The final TV episodes are a freaking trip of people talking about their feelings, fears, and what motivated them and drove them. Again, the people who made this were on some good stuff. In essence, Shinji realizes that he wants to be with his friends, family, even if it hurts him because he would rather be around people he loves than nobody. So, at the end of a galleon, he decides, yeah, we'll go back to a world where I can feel pain. And you know this I feel because when he chokes Asuka, which is a weird thing to do, he's just checking to see if there is pain. So I, and there was, so everything's back to normal, I feel. And the TV episode end with the clapping congratulations. I think the congratulations is that he realizes that it's better, it's okay to be hurt. And you don't need to run away from it. So I think that's why I got congratulated. That's my opinion. Obviously, I feel like it's really up into interpretation. Let's start with what I was clearly right about, which is not much. So yeah, I was right that Shinji was the main character. That was pretty easy to spot, obviously. Also, I was right about that, yeah, if they were Gundam, mechs, or Evas, or whatever you want to call them, the world freaking blows in more ways than one. <laughs> now, these are the things that iffy on. Like, I thought Jindo was this evil dude and everything, but I don't know. I'm 50 50 on it. He was cold and not nice, sure, but I don't know if I would call him evil. It just seems like he wanted to get the job done and do what he thought was right. Though I was right that he is pretty much Shinji's main conflict because they don't click whatsoever. Also, I was kind of right in technicality that Shinji died because he got reborn when he fused with the Eva. So to be reborn, you have to die. Yeah, technicalities. <laughs> now, stuff I was clearly wrong on, obviously the date, and I thought Tokyo 3 would be an event that occurred that destroyed the city but nah, it's really just the third edition of Tokyo with all this tricked out protective stuff so it doesn't get destroyed. Also, something else I was majorly wrong in was there was going to be like a love triangle between Shinji, Ri, and Asuka. There really wasn't. Shinji liked Ria, but I wouldn't say it's something serious or important to the plot or even gets like development into a relationship type of thing. So yeah. Lastly, I was majorly wrong about the other characters. They are really important. I can't say if you took one out of this whole show that you could really do without them. Like Kanji was important. Ritsuki was important. Even though I didn't mention that much in my review, but she is important to the show. Believe me, she is really important to the show. And um, yeah, just a lot of important characters who don't get a lot of uh, showing in what I said, probably. I just thought they'd be more background, but they're really important to the uh, overall essence of the show. Now with that out of the way, I just want to get some thoughts on the whole thing. I really like the scenes they kept like in frame for a good minute. 
it just created a special feeling for more uh, scenes like that. Like when Mizuto and Shinji stared at each other for a good minute in shock that they were still seeing each other and they can move on. Um, it was really cool because they were like, wow, I can't believe we can keep on doing this. So it was just, or the scene with Asuka and Rei in the elevator, which creates all this tension and makes you feel kind of awkward. It was a smart idea. Make them sit in the elevator because it's awkward between them. And it got even more awkward when it was just them in the elevator slowly going up. You felt like you were in there. It was unintentionally funny, I felt. And I couldn't stop laughing at times. Like, the time Shinji and Asuka did a freaking dance routine to beat up an angel with just some stellar work. It was a masterpiece of you will. I showed this earlier with the freaking angel playing some godly funny music. He's going, oh, no, 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 no. When Asuka was losing it, freaking put me in tears because it was freaking ridiculous. Another great thing, which you can only appreciate from watching it, is that it freaking rewards you for watching the insanely slow first episodes. Like I said earlier, the first episodes drag out, but once you get past it, it gets wild, stuff starts connecting, like two ping pong players, it was freaking insane. Like my favorite little arc of stuff connecting is this whole kanji arc with him finding the truth about nerve it was just great work there and i love me some mysteries man mysteries are awesome i i'll i don't care i'll always be into a mystery i'll also say man nothing beats hand-drawn animation like like yes anime is still hand-drawn at a high rate they use a lot of um cgi backgrounds and interplate interplate vector frames uh, on computer which is great because we get more anime because it's cheaper but every now and again it it's nice to look at some hand-drawn drawings and nice watercolor light backgrounds it just can't be beat and it, it was just nice to you know watch something with them aesthetics because they do a fantastic job when they need to show some insane emotions like they show some crazy facial expressions and it's top notch because you can just feel the either they're like mad scared or very anxious or just afraid. You can just you can just feel it. Like it's great work they did here. And when they start changing mad, mad frames, like just going in the frames, it's it's really ridiculous and it looks great unless you like <laughs> unless you suffer from seizures because it, it it flashes a lot. Like I'm playing like slow it down like really 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 like like 10% speed because if not I, I it, it could get someone a seizure I'm pretty sure because it them flashes are intense I want to say one thing before we end off because I want to show how big of an idiot I am it took me 12 episodes to realize the second girl in the opening isn't Asuka but instead it's Mizuto yes I am an idiot anyways I thought it was a good anime certainly not my favorite or top five because I have a certain bias and taste of a certain genre but I can easily see why people like it and why it is respected as one of the pinnacle anime of all time episodes which are decent a little slow and then you'll be rewarded with a crazy insane world of just 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 mind mind craziness all right just, just uh, crazy anyways I'm Zaki. I'll see you next time when I do something anyways bye bye